Uh, hello everyone, uh, it's Peter. Uh, we are coming back. Uh, we will continue uh, with the spring rest. So uh, last time uh, we have um, a parameter through the URL uh, as a name and we return an employee. Uh, so uh, in industry, uh, this kind of response with just one object is not good enough. So we mentioned that if this name does not exist in the database, what will happen, right? We need to provide a more specific message for different cases. So to do this, uh, I will add a new class, which is a top level class called response. It's my response, just the response. So this response has two fields called uh, successful. So to see if this search returns successful method, or we can give a message. If successful is uh, then there's no message. If successful is false, this message actually is the error message if successful is false. <laughs> now. Okay. Let's do this. And after that, after we have this is a top level response, then we can get an employee which extends response. Okay. So for this employee, it has two results. Either this employee is found, then we have name and salary, or this employee has nothing inside with the name and salary, and it will give a false, uh, a false successful. Okay, so then we go back to the uh, to the service. Okay. So we have this employee, we set the name, so these things. So it means uh it means entity, okay. Let's say this entity. So there are two results. So if uh uh let's say it's find by name if entity is equal to null, then entity dot set uh Oh, sorry, it's not here. In the in the map, in the map. Okay. Uh, so we have a new entity, a new employee. If emp equal equal to now. In this special case, uh, no, uh, no. Uh, oh, sorry. If entity equal to now. Sorry. Entity equal to now. We cannot use docket name, right? Because this will be now point exception. So then I will say set successful equals to uh false right and then the set message uh, so uh employee not found in db okay give this message and then else okay i put here And then in this case, emp dot set success for equals to two. Okay. So then this looks good, right? So we have two cases. Uh, so uh, emp dot find by name it might return now. Uh, it might return now. This name does not exist. So in the now case, we just successfully equal to false. Okay. Now, in this case, uh, we can run the code again. Let's do it step by step, and uh, I will gradually uh, make it as an industry level of the spring rest, not uh, just a sample. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Now, uh, in here, so we have two requests. Let's start from the first request, which is uh, Alice. So then you run it, you get Successful is two, right? So Alice get the uh, the salary. Now for request two, I just give uh, any name like A B C. This name does not exist, right? So then I run it. Then I call JSON. Say successful is false. So the message is employee not found in DB. Okay. So this is the way to handle the now uh, response from the database. So you you do some search from database you might get or not get some result.
then you need to use this way to handle that, to give the UI a very clear information. Not only the data, you also need to give some reason like this message. Okay. So this is uh, uh, about the handle the null point exception. And then for the controller, uh, you can return an, an object. So a better solution is you can return a response. Uh, response entity. So let's talk, I change this to response entity, which is a wrapper to wrap your response. You can see this. Okay. Then by name, so what I read, so then I get uh, employee EMP equals to EMP service dot search by name within this name. So next, I will explain reason why we have this wrapper. Uh, we'll make it better. So then I will return new response entity. Uh, so then with this EMP, then we have HTTP status dot OK. Okay. So HTTP status is also very important. It OK means it normally returns the correct value. Otherwise, uh, it may have bad request, may have internal error or some other thing. Right? So the OK is, is, is good. Uh, but the, in this example, it, it, you cannot show any advantage of response entity because you have to input a name, right? This is URL. Uh, but sometimes you may input a payload. The payload may have validation. It's not going to the database yet. The input parameter or in, input payload has some invalid data. So then we should have written a bad request. Now let's make another test. To do the, another test, we should search by salary. Okay, now uh, let's go to the, uh, let's remove this one, remove this one. Uh, let's go to the employee service top level interface. Then I need to search by salary. So then this is uh, then this could return a list of employees, right? List of employees. Uh, okay. No. What uh, if we return a list of employees? So let's uh, write another class called. Oh no! I just uh, stop it. Uh, otherwise, it will restart uh, every time. Uh, new class. I say employee wrapper. The wrapper interface will uh, add the uh, top level class is response. Okay. This response. So uh, I return this response. Then inside I have a private list of employee uh, list of employees. Uh, yes, list of employees. Uh, let me see. Uh, so the okay. Oh, I need to divide into two parts because each employee also extends response. So if I have employee wrapper, uh, let me think about this one. So I need to have two things. So I should have a class uh, employee response. So this one, uh, let, let me use this one to extend response. Uh, and then uh, have, have those things. Okay, this is the employee response. And the employee, I don't extend response. I just as, 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 as a simple employee. Okay. So in this service, uh, I map to employee, uh, this is an employee response, map to employee response, okay. Now here is an employee response. Okay. So this one, uh, this is employee response, which extends the response. 
So let's do this. Okay, uh, map to employee response. Let's do this. Okay, from from the top top level, for one employee, I use employee response. Okay, then in the service, uh, let's see, this employee service. Let's Save this one. So I don't need this employee. So this is a, a employee response. Okay, to this one. Now next I have wrapper. Wrapper is a list of employees. So we just say employees with s. Now let's do get and setters. Now this is list of employees. So for the front end, so this one I change this to employee response. Uh, this is response. Let's see, this is response to give a better naming convention. Uh, search by name. And this is also the employee response. Okay. Now let's come back. Uh, now I do an employee wrapper. Employee wrapper also extends response. So in this employee service, I add another one called uh, employee wrapper. Uh, uh, search by salary. Okay. So we can have two salary, integer minimum salary and uh, integer maximum salary. Uh, employee wrapper. Uh, so I don't have employees here. So now go to the employee service. Now I add a wrapper. Uh, basically, this is a map. This is a mapping. So a better strategy is uh, for this mapping, I put in a separate uh, mapper file, so we can uh, call the static method of the mapper uh, in in this response. So that's uh, just to do the same refactoring. This is called refactoring the code. New package com dot, dot emp dot mapper. Okay. So this mapper is new class. I just say uh, employee mapper. Okay. So for employee mapper, I just add this one inside, but change this to public and static, so that I can call it directly. Uh, that mapper is to map to employee response. Now go back, I can remove the code. Uh, employee mapper dot map to response. I can import this one. So I don't need this anymore. So from service side, it looks better. So I don't have the logic, we'll go to the mapper part. Okay, let's add this one, minimum salary and maximum salary, so that I can get uh, a list of employee entities. Equals to uh, uh, EMP dot dot fund by salary with minimum salary and the maximum salary. Uh, okay, so this one and this one. Okay. That's a list. Now I want to change it to employee wrapper. So there are two cases. If I cannot find any entities, I cannot find any entities. So if I use collection utils, so, uh, uh, collection utils is uh, from the uh, Apache, so let's go to <coughs> comments. Okay. We need to add uh, Apache since. 
Yamo Baji. Yeah, this collection for this one. Mm, just I just added two of them because they are using uh, lots of them in, in this one, so I add in the prompt. That's what I need for Apache dependencies with collection util. Now after that, so uh, I can use collection util dot is empty. Uh, so which one? This I think it, uh, this is Apache comments. Yes, this one comments entities. Now. So, uh, then uh, I will say, uh, now first I create a uh, wrapper, employee wrapper, to new employee wrapper. Uh, now, wrapper dot set uh, successful. Is false. Wrapper dot set message. Actually, in this case, there's no nothing nothing wrong in this code. I just give a message that no no record can be found for this criteria. Right? So message record found. Uh, just no record found for this one. And else, if there's something, then I need to convert these entities. Uh, to the list of employees, right? So then, uh, then I will go to the mapper. Uh, let's go to the mapper for this one. See, this is mapper. Uh, because I I want to use the, the, these salaries. So uh, decimal format. This one I can put as a uh, private static final. Uh, Decimal format, I just use the DF like this. Now, here I use DF dot format. I can save the code because I used this format for in many places. Now, I just map to employee with the employee entity. So employee equals new employee. So then set name send salary. I just copy the code and return EMP. Okay. Now, uh, now here uh, in the wrapper dot set employees, right? Set employees. So because it's not empty, I can use the stream. Let's have a review of stream dot stream dot map okay map so for each entity I map to uh employee mappers dot map to uh employee okay entity then dot uh let's let's say dot map Okay. Then the collect the collectors the to uh to list. Uh, that's the way. Okay. This is the one we uh, uh I intensely add this one to have a review of the using the stream. Okay. So I don't need to use the for loop to go through each entity and set to uh, to map to each. Uh, employee and then put in the list. I don't have to do that. I can use stream to do that. Then the, uh, after that, uh, I will add uh, wrapper dot set successful, set, uh, set successful equal to two. Okay, sorry. Uh, now go back to wrapper. So this is search by salary. Now let's go to the controller part. We add another mapping. This time I want to use a different way of the mapping. So I can use the search uh, uh, salary. Uh, so here, 
I want to use as a, a query parameter, not the a path parameter. This is path variable, right? So for query parameter, it's like this. I also use response entity. Uh, employee uh, wrapper. Okay. Search by salary. So here I use request param, like minimum salary. Minimum salary. With minimum and the maximum. I, uh, I will do this way. I write two parameters here and then another one. Yeah, this is a notation. This minimum salary, this is uh, maximum salary. No. Okay, now log dot info. Find the employees with the salary between this one uh, and this one. Okay, so this is minimum salary and the maximum salary. This is info. And then I get the employee wrapper. Uh, Wrapper equals to uh, EMP service dot search by salary. I input the minimum salary and the max salary. And then return new response entity with wrapper HTTP status dot OK. So this way I can use the minimum salary and the max salary as a question mark. Uh, from the URL. So this is quite different from the previous one, uh, pass parameters from the uh, URL. Uh, so this is used the query. Okay. Now, let's start with this one. So uh, this employee will be deleted. And the employee service, let's remove those uh, unused uh, things. Okay, this is employee. Okay, now research by salary. Let's uh, run it. Okay. Now, from this way, uh, I can uh, uh, clone resource, uh, search. So I say search two. Uh, doesn't look good, but just say search two. Okay. In the search two, this is search by salary. I re rename it search by uh, salary. Uh, and uh, let me see the controller. This is a search salary. Okay. Now let me go to this one search salary. Now, I don't need this one, I can delete it. But the parameter, I can add. I have two parameters, one is minimum salary, say is uh, 50,000. And then I can add a uh, maximum salary, which is uh, 80,000. So from the URL, you can see uh, it's a question mark, minimum salary and the maximum salary equal to this one. So you can also add it here, minimum salary and the maximum salary. Uh, so this is not from the URL, this is with question mark, with a query, and then with the end sign. So let's run it. Okay. Now successful is true. And the employee is this Alice, this is this Alice and Bob, right? Between the two salaries. So this is a list of employees. Now let's make the second one. Okay, I delete. Uh, I can clone the resource. Uh, let's say request two. Suppose my minimum salary is uh, so. Let's let's use this one. Minimum salary is uh, twenty thousand, and the max salary is twenty five thousand. I believe uh, there's no record with this range. So then 
I run it. Okay, so it's for no record found, right? So we get the result. And uh, for this case, and for this case, we can also add, uh, this is a, a name equals to minimum salary, and uh, we can have required equals to false. Means I don't have to input the minimum salary, or I don't have to input the maximum salary. Okay. So uh, name equals to max salary, uh, let's say we have minimum salary, but we don't have maximum salary. Let's say this is, uh, by default it's true. By default it's true. You can set it to false. So uh, I will use required equal to false. Uh, uh, for example, uh, if I set both of them are false, okay, both of them are not required, but it's not both false, so I will have validation for that. Uh, it depends on how you design it. I just this as, a, as an example. So, if both of them are false and no, uh, you don't input the minimum salary and the maximum salary, then I will have a, a case if minimum salary is equal to null and maximum salary is also equal to null. Okay. So I will consider this as a. Uh, I will consider this uh, as a wrong input. So I will return new response entity uh, with HTTP status dot bad request. So that's a bad request. At least you need to input something. Right? At least you need to input something. But if you go to the service side, uh, the problem is, uh, if you open this one, the problem is if one of them are now, that's a that's a big problem, right? So uh, we have to modify, we have to uh, skip the null point exception. So if this is null, uh, I will set this as uh, uh, integer dot uh, minimum value. Okay. If max salary is null, I will use max salary as the max value. Uh, if you don't give the value, I'll give you the max value and or minimum value. So then I can guarantee this code is working fine. So let's come back. Uh, go to the uh, go to this one. So I add another request. Current request say request three. So this request, my minimum salary maybe is uh, fifty thousand. And the max salary, I I delete it. I'm oh, sorry, I just delete it. I just input the minimum salary. So then I say it will all have the those salaries, right? All have those salaries. That's one case. Or I give you another test case. I'm oh, sorry. I uh, will clone request as request four. So in this request, uh, I have minimum salary. Uh, I only have maximum salary. Okay. Max salary equals to uh, say sixty thousand. Okay. I don't have minimum salary, so it can also work. So you can see, then it's. Bob and uh, James, both of them have the maximum salary of this one. Uh, and uh, you also can have uh, clone request, let's say request five. Let's say the field case. The field case means that I don't have either maximum salary or minimum salary. So that's just I run it. So there's no JSON, so this will be uh, this is close. Uh, what happens here? Be between now and now. So then uh, it will give. Uh, let's say. So it will give uh, controller the HTTP status the bad request. Uh, bad request. Uh, Say 
Uh, maybe I can add something, okay? If I add a text new response, uh, add, uh, oh, no, no, not, we cannot add this. I don't have to give a response, I just say by the request. So this from the, from the front, front end, so uh, for example, uh, if I give the link, not from the SOAP UI, let's go to the link, say localhost 8080 EMP, uh, the manage the search uh, salary. Let's see this. Uh, this page is not working. Uh, let me see. Manage search. Uh, okay, so this one, uh, yeah, see, HTTP error 400, 400 is bad request, okay, this is the, uh, this is error, the bad request with, uh, bad request with 400, that's the status code, the correct HTTP status code okay means the status code is, uh, 200, 200 is the correct code. Yeah. Now this is correct. So uh, we have this one. Uh, we just make a test of all those things. Now this is all about the kit mapping. So kit mapping, uh, we can have the parameters through the URL. We can use the query parameter, uh, request, par uh, request param to have it uh, through the uh, query. And then we can use the required use two or four to determine which one can be exist or which one cannot be may not be exist. Okay. Now next, I will go through the post mapping. That is, I want to save a record. Okay. So uh, let's say then it's a post mapping. Post mapping, I I will say uh, save. Uh, use this URL. Now I still use response entity. Uh, just the response. Uh, I just save employee. Uh, the input is employee. Okay. I just want to save employee and then I return response. Uh, this is post mapping. Uh, so uh, in in this uh parameter we need to add uh request body this annotation means that this is a payload uh, employee is a payload okay. so uh to do this in the service side uh i want to uh return a response uh save uh just say save i save an employee Okay, that's the top level. Because say I don't, have to, I don't have to return any data, I just tell you it's successful or not. This is employee. Okay. Now let's go to the uh, go to the uh, service side. Uh, add a method. Let's save. Uh, so if I save. Uh, employee, I have to map this employee to employee entity. So I go to the mapper. Uh, let's go to the mapper. Public static employee entity. Map to employee entity. So this is input is employee. Okay. So employee entity new employee entity entity dot set name is name uh, uh, employee dot get name now entity dot set sorry now here is a important thing so the employee sorry is in string format so I use integer dot pass in with employee dot get uh, salary because I pass a string to a salary then I return an entity okay. of course this could be some error okay this could be some error so uh, in the future we will make a test for that okay. now 
let's this is mapper. Now go to the service. Uh, not this employee. Go to the service side. I will first make an employee entity equal to employee mapper dot map to uh, entity. See. Then, so if oh uh, sorry, uh, dot. Uh, there's a emp dot p dot dot save. Uh, save entity. Let's say save a new entity and the return response. So I have to create a response. Response. Go to new response and response dot set uh, successful. Oh. Uh, What happens with my response here? Dot set successful equals to true. Okay, now return response. Okay, after the service is if done, we go back to the controller. Uh, uh, let's log the info. Save employee with the employee. Okay. Now response. Equal to the service dot search uh, save employee with a response, and then I return new response entity response HTTP status dot okay. Now uh, there's no much error, but uh, I can still verify the EMP. So if EMP the the name is now or sorry has wrong format, that's a different story. You can also add it. Uh, uh, we can use save, and then uh, let's uh, run the, uh, the app. Okay, now let's go to this one. Uh, the next one, I can make a copy. Let's say save. Okay. Now in this save, uh, the method name is uh, uh, save. Let's say, uh, I just say save employee re, uh, rename. Save uh, employee. Now the method name, I change it to save. Okay. I just first use one request. In the request one, I here I use the post. Uh, post we will input the payload by default is a JSON format. Of course, you can change to other format. I just use JSON as a, as an input. And uh, then then the URL is safe. The URL is safe. So I just use name. I add a name. Say uh, uh, and then I have salary. Sorry, I use uh, uh, 75,000. I run this one. So then I run it. So successful is true. So it means it's successful, save it. So then uh, I will check if Tommy really exists in, the, in my database. So I go back to the uh, search. Uh, this search is. Uh, Oh, I just I don't search by name. I just search by the salary. The salary, the first one, uh, the salary is between. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, between five fifty thousand to seventy thousand. Okay, I have. Uh, yeah. Why I. Oh, that's the, oh, that's the code. Uh, I should have minimum maximum value. Let's run it. Uh, why is not saved? Let's see. Uh, maybe I delete. Uh, 
did by accident. Uh, the parameter is not saved, so okay. Let's add the parameter. Add uh, minimum salary is fifty thousand. Then add max salary is eighty thousand. Okay. Now after this, let's run it. So you can see Tommy is inside. Uh, Tommy is inside. Uh, I run it again. So it should be there. I don't know by accident why it is deleted. Okay, then in the request two, yeah, request two has the minimum salary. It's good. Uh, this one, uh, there's no value for minimum salary. That's request two. This value is only has minimum salary, say, uh, forty thousand. So I just make a good format so that's it's all is here and then the third one we have max salary uh, is uh, 60,000 I just remove the minimum salary uh, parameter just the maximum salary then let's run it I have two I go back to this one uh, we only have max salary uh, why is looks like they are overlapping something. Not sure. You see, if you delete it, uh, there's a problem. Okay, I got it. I got it. So maybe I need to write in different way, uh, different search criteria. So the, for the parameters, um, so the, the later one will over, overlap the uh, the former one. And in this request. If I change name, uh, I, I can add Tommy here uh, from request, request three. So this one, it won't be overlap each other, so I add Tommy. So then I can get the latest inserted record. That's Tommy, okay? Uh, that's, that's one thing. Now this is save. Uh, save is pretty simple, we just give a payload. And then it will enter the Java world and then save the record. And next, okay. let me do the update. Uh, I want to increase salary by by uh, one thousand dollars or or some input value. So uh, I will use the put request, and uh, I think the, uh, the payload. Uh, I will define another payload. Okay, let's see. Is uh, sorry increase request. I just add this payload. Uh, the this payload will have a name. Who want to increase sorry and uh, then give a integer increased uh, salary. You can use INT or integer because it's uh, auto boxing, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Now uh, this is my payload. So in the uh, controller, this is a put mapping. Uh, put mapping is say update. Uh, so maybe I I don't say update. I say increase. Right? This looks better. I want to increase salary, so response entity. So the result entity is still response. I can successfully add it or not. So uh, increase salary. Okay. Request body. Uh, so salary increase request. Uh, this is request. Oh, there's one thing is about the employee. Uh, so if you see the uh, the logs, this log doesn't look good because the employee doesn't override the the two screen method. So I can uh, open declaration. I can add the two screen method as for the log purpose. Now, 
also for the salary increase request. Open declaration. I also add the uh, to stream. I can automatically generate to stream method uh, for this one. Now, let's go to the service side. Uh, here I log the info. Uh, increased salary for uh, this is request. Uh, and uh, then I have a response. Uh, this one I just say now, so I will change it later. Uh, so for the put and the post, actually I don't need any uh, uh, I don't need any response. Just I tell the system I can update or save successfully or not. Okay. Now let's go back to the service side. Uh, I need to uh, update this uh, salary increase request. Now let's move to the this one. I will add an implement method here. This is update. Uh, to update is uh, pretty simple. Uh, I just read it. Uh, I get employee entity entity equals to dot, dot find by name. So this request dot get name, right? So we already have the name. Then we run the uh, emp dot, dot update salary by name. Okay. So this is, uh, oh, I don't need to read it, just by the names. So it's a request dot get the name. And the increase salary, I just added request dot uh, get increase salary. That's it. So this part will be removed. So I add a response and successful. It's the same like the update. Okay. Now, uh, from the controller, I just say EMP service dot update. I just go to this request. No, let's run it. Uh, so let's go to this app. Let's run it. Okay, so uh, I will uh, copy this one. Uh, clone request is update employee. Okay. Then this method is go to the controller, increase salary. Now in this request, I change post to put uh, request. So here you can see this is put mapping. Uh, this is post mapping, this is put mapping. In the put mapping, uh, I, uh, so in the put, let's see why we have this one. Oh, this will be deleted, this save. We don't have this parameter anymore. So, okay. And in this request, uh, I will delete this one and I give the payload. So this is, what's the, let's see, what's the URL? It's increase, okay? Then I go to the increase. Now I give a name, uh, like uh, name uh, is Alice, and uh, uh, salary uh, increased, uh, what's, uh, let me see the check the field. The field name should match, uh, increase the salary. Yeah. Okay. 
the increase salary by one thousand dollars. Uh, because it's integer, it's not a string, so I use one thousand without a code. Okay. Now before I run this, first let's uh, check uh, this request. Is go to edit. So the salary is seventy two thousand. Now I run this one. It's two. So after that, I will check the salary again. So it's seventy three thousand. Okay. So it means the update is working. Uh, the update is working. Now the last one is delete. Uh, the last one is delete. So I can delete by name. Uh, delete somebody by name. Uh, let's see. Uh, to do this, first in the in the service side, okay, uh, I go to the upper level. Uh, Uh, delete is also a return response. Delete is successful or not? Delete with uh, uh, employee, uh, not not employee with uh, with a name. Delete somebody. In, in the whole procedure, we don't know the ID at all because ID is automatically created. Uh, I don't need have to know the ID. Okay, this is delete. Okay. Now, okay, uh, let me just put this one. So let's delete it. So for this delete, uh, first I use employee entity. I first get this one equals to uh, emp dot uh, find by name. I find this entity with the name. Now I use dot dot delete uh, delete entity. Uh, it's pretty simple, and then I do the response. Uh, during the procedure, I didn't check about the now. And the entity could be now, right? So if entity is equal, it's not equal to now. If it's equal to now, it doesn't affect anything. So I don't delete anymore. I still return this uh, two. So no matter this name exists or not, I always run the delete. Uh, I, I always return two at least. Now, then I use delete mapping. Delete mapping, I can add delete. With a name as a parameter. Okay. Now, public. Uh, uh, just copy this one. So let's say delete employee. Uh, so the parameter I can copy the this one. This is a name. Okay, uh, this delete mapping, this one, uh, I delete employee, this name, okay, this response is dot delete, uh, this name, okay, then that's it, this is for delete. Now, let's come back to the uh, to our code. Uh, let's run it again. Now we add another one. Uh, clone resource. Uh, delete employee. And for this one, uh, then I change the name, delete employee. So the request, I change to delete. So this man is, uh, uh, let's say the URL, here is delete name. So I just delete uh, with a name. Okay. I give a name, say I want to delete uh, edit. Okay. Now, when we start, we have Alice in our system. So that is is starting at 72,000 uh, salary. Now I want to delete it. Uh, so success. Then if you search for this Alice again, 
say false in print not found. So it's, it means this edit is successfully deleted. Uh, it's successfully deleted. So this is pretty much about the REST API. So we have uh, so hello is a dummy one. We have uh, we can search by name, search by salary. One is you passing the parameters through the URL, and the other is passing uh, through the uh, queries, uh, query params. And then we can save, we can increase salary with the put mapping and the delete. So that's the uh, get, post, put, and the delete. Uh, so that's pretty much about the REST API. So next class, uh, we will cover more about the testing, how to test the whole system. So it's, it's very likely to be an enterprise application with all the uh, things here. And the next time, I will talk about the testing. Testing is another big topic. Uh, thank you.